Out of conference, the San Diego State Aztecs come in. You've seen them on film. You know what you're about to face. Out of conference, but out of character a little bit the way you came out in this game as far as the first couple of games this season has been concerned. Well, we had a pretty good idea. They were going to stack a lot of people uh, when they had played against some run teams. They would really played with their goal line defense, and that's what they did. They had a substitute lineman in. They had five D linemen instead of the four they normally have. And, uh, you know, they played a lot of zone blitz type things, and so we could find some zones. And I, I thought we did a pretty good job of finding some holes in their secondary. You can count on people doing just that against you, can you not? I think the better we get throwing, yeah. the scarier it's going to get for people to do too much of that, especially with the plays that we can take downtown. Uh, and I think as our receivers grow and mature and become more of a threat, we'll get less and less of that. 102 plus, boy, you would like to give them some mid-October central Ohio weather, but they felt right at home in San Diego practically here with this weather. It was a gorgeous day and a great crowd. And up top, as you mentioned, very first drive, Steve Belisari to Darnell Sanders. Well, they were blitzing and, and really leaving that zone over there uh, early in the game open. It was good to see Darnell get there and uh, make a play. What is this? Shotgun formation. I like it. Well, they were rushing five people most of the time, whether it was their four-man front or their five-man front, and we had six protectors and just gave Steve a good chance to have some time, and there he found Michael Jenkins. Michael Jenkins, and throwing on first down, but more important than throwing, completing on first down, Well, that, right? that's, that's what we try to do, and then it was good to see that we were converting on third and short with Jamar Martin. I thought Jamar did a good job every time he had that chance to run the ball. Pick up a five as he bulldozes his way for a handful and then a 32-yard field goal attempt here by Josh Houston. You'd like to make good on this. Well, we really would. We need to make all of our kicks inside 25-yard line, and uh, we just, you know, that takes a little bit out of you as a team, but we're working on it. Those two kids are working hard, and, and uh, they'll get better. Competition will make them stronger as they go. As the Aztecs take over on offense, they did a nice job, I thought, of spraying the ball around a little bit and, and leaking some people out under. And that first half, they didn't turn it over. And this is a good running back. He ran hard and, and uh, protected the football and, and I thought gave our defense a very, very good challenge in that first half. Larry Ned, 17 yards right there, and then it's Ned up the middle again. Well, you know, we weren't at our best. We were solid, but we weren't at our best. And I think uh, we learned that that second half, you have to get at your best. And they went down and and made that uh, three-pointer, that first drive, which we gave to him on that roughing the kicker call, mm -hmm. if you remember, yep. let them keep the ball. Tommy Karofsky from 29 yards, a three to nothing lead for San Diego State, back to the air and back to the first downs. Well, it was good to see on first down, picking up about 17 there with uh, Michael Jenkins uh, on the catch, great pass protection. I thought our protection, except for a couple times, was darn good, and here you see the deep ball and great catch by Chris Vance. We've got to be able to do that if they're going to play our wide guys man-to-man. -man. Difficult over-the-shoulder catch for Vance, 44 yards on the pickup. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to be a good football player, and it's good to see him get out there. This one complete to Jenkins, pick up a 13. Again, I think uh, Michael, Chris, Chris Gamble, they're all coming along, and as our protection gets better, our passing game is going to continue to get better. Lydell Ross now on the ground for his fifth score of his season. Uh, good blocking up front. He had to, to get through one man there. He met him on the goal line and scored the touchdown, and it was good to get that seven-pointer on the board. We didn't want to have to settle for another field goal attempt. Well, six to three at that point. You get the six, but uh, again, the uh, the kicking game, I don't know about concern, but, you know, it takes the wind out of yourselves a little bit when you miss that. Every point is precious, and we've got to understand that, and, and uh, you know, we will as time goes by. Six to three is the way that quarter ended as we head to the second. This one, 12 yards complete right into your living room. Well, they had a, a couple good little out routes that they ran, and then again, this uh, this running back did a good job, and, and all of a sudden, uh, they're up on us nine to six, and, and we end up blocking there. Uh, extra point. Turnabout fair play, 9-6 the count. As you mentioned, the ball on the ground, the defense starting to come with the pressure. Well, you can see as the second quarter was getting older, we were starting to put the pressure on them more. We didn't come up with that one, uh, but we put a lot of pressure on them, and uh, they came through and, and hit their field goal, and so all of a sudden it's a 12-6 game, but within a touchdown, so we weren't going to panic. Belisari again finds Jonathan Wells out of the backfield. This Good time. job, about a 20-yarder there on first down coming out, and we wanted to go down and, and get ahead before the half, so I thought our guys did a good job of, of uh, working the two-minute offense, uh, throwing the football, protecting, uh, good job finding Darnell Sanders over the middle, and, and we're moving the chains. 12 yards, the pickup on the completion to Darnell Sanders. Up top for 15 more, Belisari goes to Chris Vance this time. Well, here again, we're in the empty set, and, and a good job on the curl route by Chris Vance, and, and we're down into... Uh, uh, their territory inside the 40-yard line. 15, as I mentioned, now complete. Darnell Sanders, something up the middle with the tight ends today. Well,
Good job getting up there. We stalled out a little bit, and, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we were wide left on that field goal, and that would have brought us to 12-9, to uh, but at any rate, uh, you know, we're 12-6, to knowing that we have to play a lot better than that, and, and I think everyone in the locker room was in consensus that we've got to play like it's the last day of our lives. If we'll do that all season, we can have a good football team. When you say empty set, and those are some of the different things. You're splitting wideouts, four receivers out. Uh, empty set is never really empty when you have Steve Belisari back there. Well, that's right, and we think he's a good runner. Yeah. And we had a couple things designed for the quarterback to run. I think we may have run him uh, once or twice uh, in the ball game, but I think that's a good set for him because he is a good runner, and I think he does a nice job uh, when we have great protection uh, picking out where to go with the open ball. Second half highlights when we, when we return on Buckeye Football Weekly. What else could be going on in there? You can't be talking about schemes and have a team come out like they did. I mean, something else had to be said in there. Well, there really wasn't much scheme discussion. We didn't come out and run a whole bunch of different plays or play a whole bunch of different defenses. We had to play to our capabilities, play with the vengeance and the, the excitement and, and, and play how we know how we can play. And, uh, you know, I thought, especially on defense, the way we came out and started forcing those turnovers and I'm sure it helped a little bit that they had some miscues but that's the way we play we put pressure on opposing offenses and come up with turnovers and then we have to cash in and and we were able to do that and defensive play especially can be such a catalyst because it's the emotional side of the ball that's right. well football is an emotional game and that's why it's so difficult over a long period of time you know to keep that height but if you're gonna be good and make a run at things you have to be able to do that and we've got to be mature enough to keep that high for a long, long time. Emotional weekend, Hall of Fame ceremonies, Pepper Johnson right there, New England Patriots, his ties are with right now. A lot of Buckeyes up there as well. Clark Kellogg, former basketball player, CBS analyst now. Katie Smith, WNBA's leading scorer, the all-time Lady Buckeye scorer in women's basketball for Ohio State. And Steve Tobar, as you mentioned at the top of the show, also uh, talked to the team today. He sure did, he did a great job, and so did Pepper. Pepper talked to him right before the ball game started, but this second half, uh, there was some talking too, I think, going on in the in the locker room. And look at those red jerseys swarm to the football. Defense is emotional, without a doubt. A Great up pressure just by Mike again. Collins there. He, he's the guy that bubbled that thing wide, and, and uh, the, the red shirts are coming after it. Silver bullets flying to the football again. That's uh, no yards on those two plays combined, and then the interception. Joe Cooper. Good job by Joe Cooper. He read the quarterback the whole way and. And it's good to see him coming up with those turnovers. Joe it can be a catalyst because he's such a leader. Now back on offense. Well, unfortunately, this one, we, we kind of drew this one up in the dirt, I hate to admit. We thought they were hanging on our receiver, and we just had a penalty. And, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, we threw the interception, but they gave it right back to us there with the fumbled snap. And They dropped and, it in the dirt for you. They sure did, and, and uh, here we got the football back. And Belisari again pulling the trigger decides not to and runs around left end and in well that's the whole thing about quarterback make good decisions there was no one open which means they were really sitting in the end zone so he had a path to run steve pumped about that and 13 to 12 buckeyes take the lead early excellent play by Derek ross there and he's got the ball tucked a little bit better than uh than he's had in the past and i thought he was going to get in the end zone but uh, big play Derek can be a big playmaker early in the second half and the Buckeye defense getting it done putting it back short field situation for the offense. well that was great you see Jonathan Wells behind the offensive line uh, Jesse Klein was up front there and Darnell Sanders and Shane Olivier was on that side and Jonathan had low pads well the uh, turnovers don't stop because after their first possession of the second half San Diego State went five straight possessions where they turned the football over and uh, another interception here see the pressure by Will Smith and then the interception over there uh, is that Rob Reynolds that uh, came up with the pick? Hold that in. Is Robert Reynolds, yes. Here we come back on offense, and you see the play-action pass. Clip it out to Ben Hartsock, and, and good job right off the bat moving us down in near the red zone. Hartsock, pick up of 10. Another tight end getting into the action. Well, that was good to see. And again, they left some zones open, and our tight ends were able to get into them. Red zone has been a place you've been deadly 11 out of 11 coming into this game, so you want to cash in again. Well, here we dropped it off, and uh, that was a fourth down play, if I remember, and, and we ended up turning it back to them. We came up two yards short, but it was still a good decision by the quarterback. Sure, fourth and nine, a pickup of seven there. So they take over on downs and throw it back up again. Well, Derek Ross, when he has good position, is a guy that you don't want to throw deep on because he can go up and play the football, and it was great to see him do that today. Certainly had position there. That's the game of his career, and Lydell Ross then doesn't stop 51 yards for the touchdown well, I'll tell you what uh, as we've been saying for weeks 
Uh, Lydell Ross is going to be a good runner and and uh, there's a good job by the right side of that offensive line and Adrian Clark the left guard pulled on that play and big big play for the Buckeyes and a big big man taking the handoff here this is the antithesis of Lydell Ross Jamar Martin bulldozing his way for 11 yards I'm not sure what the antithesis means but uh, Jamar can really carry the football that's right it's a football show All right. that's right <laughs> either way you turn it over and the punt uh, once again Special teams getting it done here, especially on the punt team. Well, I'll tell you what, Andy Groom put it out there a long way. We need it a little higher, but how about that coverage? Brandon Joe uh, on the hit there, and uh, he brought uh, Ohio Stadium to a fever pitch on that one. Pass play complete, 21 yards on the pickup here, but this is kind of time where you can sit back and just don't let anything get over your head. Well, that's right, and they've got some of their yards, uh, you know, on the prevent situation, but uh, we got to uh, go sing with, without a lump in our throat this time. Uh, it's a little tough singing over there. Um, at the end of the ball game last week, but it's something that we've made a commitment to do. It's a lot more fun singing in Carmen, Ohio this weekend. The commitment to do it, a 27-12 win at home. Always want to protect that home field. Uh, you have to be unbeatable at home. If you're going to be an extraordinary football team, an extraordinary football program, people have got to say, well, we're going to Ohio State this year. You know, we're not going to win. And, uh, you know, we've got to get it to that point. Is this a tough game, uh, no matter how it plays out? out of conference against an opponent like this. Uh, if bad things happen, uh, they shouldn't have. If you win, you should have beat them. Well, hopefully we just got better. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll learn a lot of lessons. Hopefully we become more mature. Uh, things become a little bit more real. And, and reality is right now, five Big Ten opponents ahead. Mm -hmm. Penn State at State College, difficult place to play. Again, we have to grow up and take another step. All right, that is down.